Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Chris Lukander. I'm the VP of Membership for the National Capital Area Council. And we're here today to talk about the introduction to family scouting. With me, I have Aaron Chusid, the professional on staff related to technology and marketing. And on my far right, we have Richard Harrington, who is the Council Marketing and Communications VP. And we're here today, like I said, to talk about an introduction to family scouting. That's the purpose. And we would like everybody to pose questions. The purpose of the, again of the meeting is to talk about the latest and greatest that we have for family scouting. So one of our major goals for today is to collect questions, identify the ones we don't have the answers to yet, and then we can take those with to get answers for you guys. And then we're going to be presenting those at another webinar we're planning to do on May 15th, which will be the full rollout for our council. We're going to start by going through the slides we have because there's a few questions that already came in. A lot of them show up in this, which we have assembled from the available information. So I'm going to walk through this and Chris and Richard, please jump in as you see opportunities. Absolutely. The Boy Scout Age Program, which will be rolling out next year, 2019, in February. That is one of the things we are hoping to get a lot of information of next week at the conferences. So we can tell you what we expect, but mostly we're going to hold off on answering that until we have confirmation rather than spread rumors. So to review our programs, Cub Scouts now ages five to 10 because the Alliance program is now officially part of the Cub Scout program. Currently we are in the early adopter phase, which means that participants in our council who are already running family scouting, we have about 60 packs already doing this. They've been only running through fourth grade. June, it's going to go all the way up through second year Weeblos, the Arrow of Light program. The Scout program is ages 11 through 17. We have not had anything confirmed on the name, but you will notice that I am not now referring to this as Scouts instead of Boy Scouts. It is expected this is one of the things that will be announced next week. These are the two programs that are going to see the biggest changes as we move into family scouting. But DSA already has a history of having girls in our program. We have Venturing, which serves ages 14 to 20, co-ed, true co-ed programs, not separated by genders as scouting and cub scouting will be, but a true co-ed program. Sea Scouting, same ages, with a very similar program to venturing, very much high adventure focused, but with an aquatic theme. Um, we also have exploring, which has been around for decades, gives young men and women an opportunity to discover new careers. And one of our newest programs is the STEM Scouts program, which goes all the way down to third grade and is again a co-ed program. Aaron, I think what's important here is that the BSA does have a lot of experience with programs that serve both genders of youth, and that's one thing that this isn't a big change. The BSA already has camps and programs and safety programs in place that help all of these folks. And Chris, as you work with a lot of different folks in the different areas of scouting, we already have many young women that are a part of the scouting movement. An example of that, Richard, is this past weekend, I just got back from the D.C. District Camporee, and we had an exploring post there, and it was a co-ed post, and uh, it was the first time all of those young people had been on a camp out. So it was a lot of fun from that perspective to uh, bring them up to speed and expose them to, to that aspect of it. But that, that exploring post dealt with uh, emergency response, and so they were there at the Camp Marie, primarily as our medical team, if you will, in case something went wrong on that issue, so we'd have our first responders. So there's a neat blend of the programs, the various programs at one Camp Marie. We had the Cub Scouts, we had um, Boy Scouts or Scouts, we had an exploring post, and we also had a venturing crew there. So it was a great weekend. So one of the questions we get a lot is, why is this program being added? And there's a lot of reasons behind it, but one of the big reasons, and the reason we're focusing on this is family scouting. 
is we're seeing families now are busier than ever before. It's difficult for them, especially if there's multiple children in the family, to get to different activities, different nights, and different locations. And what our members have been telling us is if we can provide a single entry point for the whole family to participate, it makes it easier for them to be part of the program. There's a stat that we have here from National. They find that convenience beats cost as the primary concern of participation in the program. So the model, when you look at what they founded this on, uh, we have in our council several Vietnamese troops that have been running a model similar to this for a long time. They have programs at every age level, Cubs, Boy Scouts, Venturing, and they also have Girl Scout units involved with them. And they all meet together, do age-appropriate programming, come back together for the closing. And that's what we're trying to create the opportunity for. Units that want to continue to have the traditional program will be able to, but units that want to serve this full family will have that option as well. Um, that's a big thing. That some of the questions that came up that people were asking before the event was, is this an option? And that's one thing that's important for people to realize. And we'll talk about the specific options at each age level, but this is up to the chartered organizations that sponsor the different troops and PACs and the parents that belong in the committees, correct? Exactly. Exactly. We have also found in talking to parents that parents of daughters are interested in a program like Cub Scouting for their daughters. They're interested in a program like Boy Scouting for their daughters. The values of scouting are not just for boys. So rather than try to start a brand new program to serve the full family, it makes more sense to fold them into the existing program, which has been tested, which has been proven, which we know has benefits to young people and to their families. One thing I'd like to emphasize, Aaron, is that our program really isn't changing. There'll be some adaptations as we bring on the girls as it relates to youth protection training and some of the other issues which we'll get into. But the reality of it is what we've been delivering for over 100 years at the Boy Scout level and a little bit less at the Cub Scout level isn't really going to change. Another question that comes up a lot is why is this happening now? Why not five years ago? Why not 10 years ago? And the answer is really it was time. We reached a point, we were looking, talking with our families, asking what they needed, and they told us it was time to make this change. And this was a decision that was many years in the making. There's been lots of research, lots of discussions happening at the national level and at the council levels uh, before this was rolled out, which is why it's rolling out relatively uh, all at once. It's not a trial, it's not a test that is going forward, and it's actually already beginning with some of our Cub Scout units, correct? Yes. So let's talk about how this is going to work. The Cub Scout program, we talked about this a bit. You can have an all-boy pack, as we have several hundred of right now in our council. You can have a full family pack with boys and girls in separate dens. You can see here the blue dots on this model are the boys' dens, the yellow dots are the girls' dens. You can have an all-girls pack. All of them will use the same program, the same advancement. All of them will have the same committee structure, the same leadership positions. And with that, this is really for the individual PACs to decide how they want to implement. Some PACs have already had siblings involved and many activities already running. This is just formalizing the program and allowing them to participate and work on the same advancements, correct? That's correct. And the one thing I'd like to emphasize is that it's incumbent on us as volunteers working with our chartered organizations is to really spend some time with the chartered organization and the charter organization rep to ascertain where they want to go with family scouting and onboarding girls. And so it's important that we work with them closely so that we're aligned in delivering the program. For the scouting program, similar model, but instead of separate patrols within one troop, the recommendation is that it's going to be separate troops, a troop for boys and a troop for girls. We don't have full information on this yet because that's still off in next February, which is not as far away as it seems right now, but we have not gotten the official detailed information on this yet. What we've been told is this is how it's going to be set up 
the boys troops and girls troops will be able to use the same troop number, the same committee, can meet on the same evening in the same location. The one leader that will need to be unique for each of them is the scoutmaster. So really, there's two styles of troops here that are going to be supported. One where there are distinctly separate scout troops for girls and boys with their own troop committee, or one where they share the same troop committee and same chartered organization, and even theoretically, the same troop number? Yes. Okay. But there would be a girls troop and a boys troop, much like how there's been a pack and a troop that can have the same number. Now there'll be a boys troop and a girls troop under the same chartered organization, if that chartered organization wants it. Otherwise, they can be distinctly separate units that are set up. Correct. Okay. And they can have meetings at the same night and split into different sides of the room when needed. They can go on activities together. They can go camping together. But this way, they will have the flexibility for times when you want to have, when you need to have an age-appropriate activity for the boys, an age-appropriate activity for the girls. They can go off into their separate units. Both boys and girls will have a full leadership chain. They'll have older boys and girls to act as role models for them. They'll have the opportunity to interact with adults who can serve as role models. And there'll be that flexibility to operate separately or together as needed. One interesting question that came up um, is we, since the scouting program will be starting in February, we have potentially second year Weeblos that will be ready to cross into a troop, female Weeblos. And one of some of the requirements that they have are involve activities with a troop. So the question came up, if we have female Weeblos, but not a female troop for them to interact with, should they just interact with a boys troop while they're completing these requirements? And then as soon as they're ready and there's a troop available in February, cross over to the girls troop, and the answer is yes, that's the recommendation. So for now, if you have female Weeblos in your pack, find a local troop they can interact with, um, meet with them so that they can learn about the scouting program, and then come February 2019, uh, we will find and start appropriate troops for them. And those activities tend to be things like attend a meeting and also uh, participate in an outdoor event. It doesn't mean go on an overnight camp out per se. It doesn't have to. It can mean a hike or other outdoor activities. It's to give them exposure to the scouting program. So I think that this should still continue to work quite well. Right. I'd, I'd like to emphasize, though, that we need to make sure that we stay within the boundaries of the Guide to Safe Scouting and Youth Protection Training when we do all this. So here's some of the questions that we've been getting. Well, Current Boy Scout troops be required to offer a program for girls? Okay. And the answer is no. They will not be required to offer a program for girls. However, I'd like to add, from a council level, it's important for all of us to make sure that we have an alternative for those interested girls. If you're not going to run a girl scout troop program, that you can direct them to a charter organization or an existing girl scout Scout, I mean, excuse me, an all-girl troop, so that they can become involved. Because we don't want to turn away interested girls because your charter organization or your unit is going to be all boys. There's been a lot of questions about how to, the process of starting up. And the process of starting a new girls troop or family pack will be the same as starting an existing unit. So first, you'll need to get a chartered organization on board. This is also how an existing pack initiates the process of becoming a family pack. Get the agreement from them, fill out the new unit application. There's a question about how many youth applications. It's going to be the same number as currently, which is we require 10 to start a new troop. Technically, at national, it's five. At council, our recommendation has been 10, but we understand we need to be flexible during this time frame. Right. So if you have a strong, a strong opportunity to start a troop and you're gathering those last few applications, there is an opportunity to start the troop with five and then build up as quickly as possible to 10. I have, I have a, an example that I can share with everybody. It's at the Cub Scout level, but I think it's, it's important. Uh, I was approached back in January by an individual who had five girls and they wanted to start a Cub Scout pack from scratch. 
and uh, they wanted to be Weeblos ones. And after several discussions about what kind of effort was involved in starting a new unit and whether there are any younger families or older families that they were aware of that would help them, uh, it became clear that it, the best method for them was to direct them to a pack that was already starting a couple other all-girl dens and they didn't have a Weebles One den. And so what, what ended up happening there was that group of girls and their parents happily went to another pack in D.C. and started a Weebles All-Girls Den. Yeah. So, Question that came in, what are recommendations and resources for advertising that we are offering a family unit? The first place that's going to be displayed at this point is on beascout.org. Um, one of the ways that your chartered organization shows they're on board with this is your charter organization representative will log into beascout.org and change the setting on the pin to show that you can now accept boys and girls. And it will then display when someone looks up your pack, if you're a boys pack, a girls pack, or a full family pack. Beyond that, it's going to be definitely a good thing to advertise on all the existing channels you have. If your pack has a Facebook page, a mailing list, pass out flyers in your local school, mention to the PTA, definitely should be a topic of conversation. Uh, a lot of families are not going to have heard about it this, this fall, and they're not going to be looking for family packs. So if your pack is offering this, definitely start having those conversations with other families now so that they know this is coming. For example, uh, we just attended an event with our chartered organization, our school's carnival, just yesterday. And we had a booth and a lot of folks came up. And for the most part, it was boys that were coming up. But we did have some girls who had heard of this and their parents came up and had questions. And we were able to actually start the conversation. We had already gone in my unit to our chartered organization, the PTA, had the discussion of what was coming. So we were prepared and able to actually answer some of those questions and give them a general timeline of what's happening. Uh, good point, Richard. I think you brought up two key words, which is our motto, be mm -hmm. prepared. And so I'm asking all of our uh, scouting families and unit leaders in, in all levels of the program Scouting to be prepared again. for uh, bringing girls into the program. Uh, obviously, right now it's the Cub Scouts, but uh, February is going to be here before you know it, and we have to onboard the girls into the scout units. Absolutely. So again, a lot of the questions come up about having the activities together, having the meetings together. And just to reinforce this, the answer is, as it is now, DENS can always have meetings in the same location, plan activities together. Two troops can have meetings together, co-located, plan activities together. That can happen. But the requirement will be that when boys and girls are registered, they will need to be in these separate DENS and then in separate troops. Can courts of honor be held jointly? We'll probably hear a lot more about that in the future, but yes, of course, as with any other events. And I think this one about why single gender units instead of a co-ed model, this does come up a lot. And I think a lot of folks really haven't heard the official reason. And I think it's important here that we take a moment to explain that one of the things that's really important here is that the girls who are experiencing things who are going to be leading other girls is important. We want to have youth led within this model, and it's important that they're able to do that. With, with our original setup with the patrol method, it's all about teaching the young boys leadership skills and planning skills along those lines. And so what we want to do is make sure that those opportunities are available for both genders. The National Committee did a lot of research about scouting programs in other countries. And one of the things they saw is that out of 100 boys, after units switched to a true co-ed model, they then had 70 members. They went from 100 to 70. And when they dug into that more, they found they only had 50 boys. So of 100 boys, they lost 50 boys, gained 20 girls. And part of the reason why is because, especially with the new scout age range, that 11 to 13, there's enough of a difference in maturity rates that the girls were usually the ones stepping forward to a lot of the leadership positions, which meant they were driving the activities, they were driving the programming, and the boys were no longer getting what they 
wanted, what they thought was exciting, and they weren't having room to mature and develop in the ways they needed. So they lost interest and, and dropped out. So the motivation for having the separate units is to give both young boys and girls a chance to mature at their own rates, to have a program that focuses on their developmental needs at that 11 to 13 age range where there is the most pronounced difference. Younger kids, it's easier to, to bring them together. Older teens, again, there's convergence, it's easier to bring them together, but in that middle scouting range, we want to give them space to develop as they need. Because one of the things that's very important to all of us is as we're opening the program up to girls, we do not want to reduce at all the quality of what we're providing for our young boys. Uh, as we've been going through this, one of our key principles has been you know, our own Hippocratic Oath, first, do no harm. That we want to add this new part of the program, but not take away what we're already providing. The next thing I want to cover in here, and again, I see there's a few more questions that uh, have come in. It looks like mostly as we've already touched on one way or another. Please keep posting your questions, send them in. I'll be checking this all week while I'm down uh, at the conference to find new ones. So as you have more questions, post them here. And if we don't have the answer already, I'll ask someone. Um, but I want to take a second to talk about what's not changing. The program is not changing in any substantive way. There's going to be new handbooks coming out with new language, new pictures, but the requirements will be the same. When we have girls working towards Eagle Scouts starting next year, it will be the same requirements for Eagle Scout, the same merit badges. Training for leaders is not changing. There will be a few additional leaders needed. You need to be sure that you have female leaders working with female scouts. Whenever you have a female scouts at a program, there needs to be at least one registered female leader in that chain, so either a den leader or assistant den leader and then a scoutmaster or assistant scoutmaster. Um, but the definition of what those programs are, what those positions are, will not change. The training for those positions is not going to change. There is a brand new version of youth protection training that's out, and it's required that every leader take that before October 1st. So I highly recommend, if you're seeing this, that I know you're by a computer. As long as you're by the computer, once we're done with this conference, head over to my.scouting.org and take the updated youth protection training. Get it down now, don't wait until September. Part of what's changed in that is it's brought in some of our lessons from decades of working with venturing, exploring, and sea scouting to expand a two-gender model of youth protection to all of our programs. So there's now a single youth protection for all levels of scouting. But, but beyond that, there's not a change in the training. Commissioner service is not changing. We will still serve units in the exact same way. So, Chris, uh, one thing I think that's important that a lot of folks have had questions on is the balance of when they put these units together. Uh, what is changing as far as the adults within units? I know a lot of questions came up about, you know, oh, can moms work with their sons? Can dads work with their daughters? And I think it's important to note that we already have that happening at the Cub Scout level and the Venture level. And so, uh, the youth protection training is updating, but parents that are qualified and registered as leaders can work with both, correct? Exactly. Nothing's really changed. I mean, we've had, in my own experience with my son's troop, um, adult females working with the scouts within the troop. Uh, we don't expect that to change. The one thing I would emphasize with Lions coming on board and family scouting at the Cub Scout level, which will also apply to scouting later next year, is we need to be prepared and we need to be looking for female adults who are willing to be active in the program and also be trained because we want to obviously deliver a quality program to all the youth and to the extent of running a program with the families having the two gender uh, model we need to make sure that we are adhering to the guide to safe scouting and youth protection training to make sure that we do have uh, appropriate male and or female, depending on what's going on with the unit for 2D leadership. But as far as the scoutmaster goes, the scoutmaster position remains unchanged. 
And my understanding is that adult leaders, men or women, uh, within a troop, both a boys' troop and a girls' troop, you can have both female and male adult registered leaders working with the youth. That's correct. That's our understanding right now. Uh, one thing I want to point out, if your charter organization decides to go with a girl troop in addition to a boy troop, uh, the Scoutmaster cannot serve in both units. Uh, so you need to have a separate Scoutmaster for the girl troop and a separate Scoutmaster for the boy troop. Now that doesn't mean that you can't have one serve as an ASM in the other unit, vice versa, but the point is we want to have a separate Scoutmaster for each unit. And I think one other thing that will also sort of help with this is that the youth protection training has been updated. Uh, in fact, on the council's homepage, there is a link so you can retake it. Uh, I've recently taken it, and all leaders are expected to get this done by October 1st, and it will be a requirement for people that want to re-register or re-charter. Is that correct? That's correct. That's a hard requirement. It's firm. They need to take the new YPT 2.0 by October 1st, as you're onboarding new adult leaders uh, with their adult registration, they will not be allowed to be registered in the unit unless they've taken YPT 2.0. So it's important for any interested adult who's going to help with this, with the program going forward, the first thing they need to do is get online, get a BSA number, take their YPT, and provide a copy of that certificate along with their adult application form. And as a reminder, every adult application goes through a background check, so, uh, which has been around for a long, long time. And so it's another thing that, as a talking point that you can share with potential parents joining the program, all the effort that we go through uh, as an organization, and we have gone through for years in trying to protect the youth. So we're going to wrap up in just a few moments. Before we do, we want to review the timeline. Right now, we're at the tail end of the early adopter phase. Um, it is, at this point, no new PACs can officially join family scouting. Now, you can absolutely be recruiting leaders and recruiting scouts and getting them integrated into your PAC. And then once the official program begins in June, Start, our official start date when you can officially bring girls into Cub Scouting is June 11th. Now you'll ask, why June 11th? Well, the BSA historically has used the second weekend in June is kind of the crossover time frame throughout the years and past when, uh, um, let's say, a Wolf Scout transitions to the next level or Weebles 1 to Weebles 2 because it was tied to the school year. So June 11th is the key date, not June 1st. There are a few other dates here, though, that are important, and that is that uh, the older girls program is expected to start to roll out with additional information to the stores and things like that in January, but that they want the troops ready, just like they would receive Weeblos into their troops in February, usually after that blue and gold celebration. They want them to be ready to start receiving them in February as well, correct? That's correct. Yeah. With the program starting in June, June 11th, that they can get registered, that means your female Cub Scouts are eligible to go to Cub Scout Day Camp and Weeblo programs this summer. Exactly. This is important to know today because today is the first early bird deadline for our NCAC Day Camps. So if you have interested Scouts, boys or girls, that want to sign up for Day Camp, try to get them in today so that they can get that early bird discount. Good. And I guess the other thing that I think is um, worth mentioning is that on the council's website at uh, our regular council's address at slash family scouting, we do have a sign up page where people can express interest in the different programs as well as get notified of additional information. So that's just at the uh, NCAC. Uh, bsa.org slash family scouting, correct? Correct. And then, of course, the National Scouting website at scouting.org slash family scouting also has a lot of resources up there, flyers, frequently asked question sheets that you could print out so you can have this discussion uh, at the troop committee level if needed so you guys can dig in or sit down with your chartered organization. But there are a lot of materials that have recently come out, but much like Chris just shared, this is continuing to change. And so the exact dates, the exact resources will continue to evolve, but we will keep publishing those to make it easier for people to find. Right. 
So one thing I'd like them jumping in on you, Aaron, um, to share with everybody who's watching this right now, and as you share it with other adults and friends and family, is that this is just the first phase. We like we said at the beginning of, of today's presentation that we want to have a more robust presentation on May 15th. That's the target date. And then we'll probably do something again in the first half of August. But again, it's all about being prepared. So here's the, what I would like to leave you with as you're closing. What's next? What are the next steps? If you and your unit have interest in participating in family scouting, whether that's at Cub Scouts now or looking at the scouting program next year, now is the time to start having those conversations with your unit committee, with your chartered organization. Start recruiting prospects for leaders. Start getting them trained. And start finding interested families. Those are going to be the major steps. Have the conversation with your sponsoring or with your chartered organization. Identify and train leaders. Identify uh, interested families and start bringing them in. And to make things easier, if there are additional questions that continue to come up, this webinar was just meant to kick things off. We do have an email address here to make that easy at family at ncacbsa.org. Please continue to submit those questions. The three of us and many others will be continuing to dig in, trying to find answers to those questions. Uh, as Aaron stated, we will have uh, an additional event coming up in a few weeks. Uh, also, there is the direct uh, link there for the council's webpage, ncac bsa.org slash family scouting. So hopefully that can be of use to you. Uh, and all of those official updates will continue to also come to the national page. So hopefully that is of assistance to you. Remember though, just as Aaron was saying, this is the time to start the conversation uh, with your organization. So hopefully this is useful to you and you are able to dig in uh, a little bit better. Uh, this is a great opportunity to continue to ask those questions. Chris, is there anything else that uh, folks should know before we wrap up for the day? I want to thank everybody for being involved in scouting and putting in your love and time for the development of our youth. And please do reach out if you have a question or a concern because we will move on it quickly. And as Richard mentioned and Aaron has mentioned, we will post things on the council website. We're not going to duplicate what National is doing. We'll provide links to National. But as the questions come up that come out of our council. We'll do our best to get them on the website and through the membership committee and working closely with your professional staff, the district executives, we will do our best to get as much information out that's accurate and timely as possible. So thank you. Okay.